Chapter 11 Hatake Kakashi slowly blinked his eyes open. Well, I, as he was very accustomed to keeping his left eye securely shut while waking up from chakra exhaustion and thus avoid draining his reserves further. These occasions were easy to spot as it always felt different to wake up from the tired slumber caused by the overusing of his reserves than from ordinary sleep. Normally he woke up silently yet swiftly, instantly alert and ready to move and fight if necessary. Now he came to sluggishly, his mind slowly awakening from the darkness it had descended into. His head was throbbing violently, again, and his whole body felt stiff and sore. He soon realized why. He was hanging from the ceiling, his both arms being stretched to the sides and encircled by multiple loops of chain that went around both his upper arms and forearms, causing his shoulders to bend backwards into an unnatural and painful position. His limbs were already suffering from the strain, aching but still feeling unpleasantly numb at the same time. He flexed his gloved fingers, checking his range of movement, not good. He couldn't make any seals as he could barely move his restrained arms. And he was still very tired, the small struggling being enough to make him gasp for breath. He growled, hating to be so weak. He turned his attention to the room he was currently being held in. It was dark, so very dark that he could barely see the walls and the corners of the room. He could hear low humming and clanking sounds coming from somewhere, like engines. Some kind of a ship, maybe? There was only one source of light, above him. He bent back his head, the light momentarily blinding him and he quickly let his head fall back, blinking furiously to dispatch the lights dancing in his field of vision. He glanced down instead. He could see the floor in the white light. The distance wasn't huge but if he were to fall down the wrong way he could break some bones or twist his ankle, both of which it wouldn't be good in his current situation. If he managed to land correctly he would be ready to escape in a relatively short time. So he had been captured. Probably by Decepticons. Not. Good. His equipment was all in place. His hit hide was still covering his forehead and the mask hiding his face. He was beyond glad for that. Maybe, just maybe he could, at some point, manage to use some of his weapons stored in the pockets of his vest. He really hoped the Decepticons were arrogant enough to overlook that. The light above made him felt too exposed in the otherwise pitch black room. He didn't like that light, the merciless white spotlight directed straight at him from the ceiling, it felt too much like he was on some kind of stage as a very unwilling performer. And he had a feeling he wouldn't enjoy night's show. He wondered if Naruto was alright. The last thing he remembered was slamming his lighting-filled fist into the visor of the flyer that had dared to touch his student. He recalled seeing Naruto roll away from under the falling Decepticon. So at least the teen hadn't been too badly injured. Then. Nothing. He prayed they hadn't gotten Naruto too. He knew for a fact that Naruto wouldn't have just left him there. If he had managed to teach the kids one thing it was that proper ninjas did not abandon their comrades and it was outside Naruto's nature to leave his friends behind. So had they captured the boy as well? Were they being held in different premises? Was Naruto somewhere around here, maybe in the next room hanging from chains too? Kakashi drew in a shaky breath. Or, he thought blankly, they could have killed him. He shook his head weakly in denial. No, Naruto was strong, would soon be stronger than him. He would have gotten away. The boy would have fought his way out. Unless he didn't want to leave you at any cost. Unless he was injured severely, his arm did look bad. He might not have been able to make any seals. Kakashi closed his eye. What kind of a teacher was he? Passing out when his student needed him? He should have been more careful. He had known he hadn't been fully recovered yet. He had been reckless, throwing his jutsus around with no thought for the consequences. And now, his student might have had to pay the price. But maybe the Autobots had managed to save Naruto even though they had been too late for him. He hoped so much that it would be the case. Optimus Prime and the rest would keep the boy safe. Otherwise, he would have failed his student as well as the great men who had entrusted him in his care. Ratchet regarded Naruto with worried optics. The boy was somewhat pale and had a slight sheen of sweat on his forehead. 
He was frowning a little and pursing his lips ever so slightly, clearly still in pain. The medic frowned. He knew very little of human physique and his inability to help made him frustrated. Luckily Mrs. Darby had fixed the arm, it had looked very painful, and it would heal properly. Speaking of Jack's mother, the kids had apparently told her the whole story as there were some incredulous noises coming from their direction. The white mech rolled his eyes. Trust the children to keep quiet about the matter, really. Optimus went to speak with them for a moment, probably briefing them about the incident and calling them to join Team Prime. If Naruto was finally about to tell the whole story, the kids deserved to hear about it too. And, well, guess Mrs. Darby was now part of that package too. Ratchet glanced briefly at the other members of the team. Both RC and Wheeljack had a very serious look in their optics, and Smokescreen was eyeing Naruto like he wasn't sure how to act around the boy. Ratchet too was more than a little shaken about the conversation that had just taken place, and he truly wondered what had happened out there in the battlefield. Apparently, he would soon find out. He returned his attention to Naruto, who winced slightly while straightening his back. Are you sure you can do this? The boy could have some other injuries too. It would did no good to ignore them. Yeah, I'm fine. Or I'll soon be, Naruto assured, attempting to mask the pain. Ratchet frowned again. Then the other kids were back, followed by a rather shocked looking Mrs. Darby who was looking at Naruto half incredulously, half suspiciously. Are you ready to begin? Optimus asked halting beside the teenager sitting on the bed. Yup. The faster we get to rescue Kakashi-sensei, the better. His determined expression turned a little sheepish. I gotta warn you, though, I'm not good at explaining things like this, not like sensei is. But I'll do my best. And that'll be enough, R.C. assured with a slight smile. Well. Naruto went silent for a moment, clearly considering the best way to begin. Maiko was moving restlessly beside Jack and Raphael, clearly wanting to say something but Bulkhead shushed her. You know how we told you we're ninjas, right? Naruto began slowly, hesitating a little, clearly unaccustomed to explaining such things to beings that had no idea what was going on. That's true, we're ninjas, but... We don't fight only with fists and knives and shurikens. From the corner of his optic, Ratchet saw RC and Wheeljack exchanging a look. There's this thing called Chakra. It's energy of sorts, formed by both mental and physical force. Naruto scratched the back of his head, looking uneasy. Damn, this is hard to explain. He muttered under his breath before continuing. Well, I can't demonstrate this next one right now so you just got to believe me. We can use it with these hand seals. He raised his good hand in front of his face and bent his fingers oddly, but looking rather accustomed to doing that, to do the ninjutsu techniques. Like magic? Maiko exclaimed. Naruto frowned. Um, no. But it sounds like magic. What exactly are those? Techniques? Ratchet interrupted carefully, before Maiko could ramble on. Well, for example, Kakashi Sensei has this really cool one. The teen's gaze wandered first to RC and Wheeljack and then to Smokescreen and Optimus Prime. Remember that one con without the head? That was Kakashi Sensei's doing. Maiko was apparently again translating everything to English because Ratchet heard Raph let out a gasp shortly after Naruto's words. However, he paid very little attention to it as he himself was trying to comprehend the young ninja's words. His gaze snapped to RC and Wheeljack. The blue fim nodded grimly in agreement. Ratchet blinked. It nearly went over his range of imagination to picture how a human could do such a thing without any guns or other weapons. Bulkhead was almost sputtering, clearly having the same difficulties. Bumblebee let out a shock chirp. Smokescreen seemed to be recalling the battlefield in his mind and his eyes widened slightly in understanding. You. You can really do such things? Bulkhead asked. Yeah, and lots of other stuff too. But now that I think about them, they're kind of tricky to explain. But for example, we can travel pretty fast when we boost the movements with Chakra. Or hit very hard. Naruto grinned a bit at that before he shook his head a bit sheepishly. I can show you them later, 
when my arm's okay again. And you can ask Kakashi Sensei about the proper theories when we get him back. He's the teacher, he's supposed to know this stuff. About how you really got here, Ratchet began, finally sensing a way to collect more information, was it with one of those techniques, then? Yeah, in a way. You know, Kakashi Sensei has this eye. The boy frowned, looking as if he was contemplating if he could tell more or if he had already said too much. Then he seemed to make the decision and continued carefully, he has this, like, really hard technique that can send stuff to another dimension. He tried to block an attack with it and, well, Naruto shrugged, there was an explosion, and the next thing we knew, we were waking up out there in the desert. You really have an ability to send objects, living objects into another dimension by the power of will alone? The medic's voice was disbelieving. The scientist in him was shouting questions that he should ask the ninja right now. The Autobots were capable of similar things too, the incident with the Shadow Zone had shown that much, but that a human could do it without any technology, with some sort of peculiar energy. Ratchet mentally shook his helm. He would have to have a long conversation with Kakashi-san about this. Yeah, but that's very hardcore, elite stuff. And you have to have the Sai Sensei has. He hides it under the headband, Naruto tapped his brow over his left eye. So there was something under that thing. I knew it. Maiko shouted in English. Maiko, be quiet. Come on Jack, don't be like that. This is awesome. Who knew they could do stuff like that? Ratchet rolled his optics. Naruto looked a bit puzzled as the other teens were both speaking in other language. Can you tell what else the little man can do with that eye of his? Wheel Jack asked curiously and caught the youth's attention again. Wheel, he can copy other techniques with it, they call him the copy nin because of it worldwide. Naruto's voice got a proud tone to it. He's one of the best in Kanoa, he's been famous since the third shinobi war, I think. You're telling us we've had a war hero here all week? R.C. exclaimed. Naruto grinned. The he's expression turned somber. I hope he won't be mad at me for telling this. I mean, we do trust you and you really helped us out but... He sighed. It's not really information we can throw around. No offense, really. Optimus nodded. We understand, and I'm sure your teacher will understand too. Naruto smiled a little. Yeah, I guess so. Then the blonde boy's expression once more changed now becoming very serious. I think you want to talk about what happened in the battlefield, next. He said slowly. Ratchet looked at the others. R.C. shot a meaningful look at Prime. The leader of the Autobots shook his head ever so slightly and said. We can talk more later. You must be tired, it would be advisable to get some rest now before we continue. Naruto looked like he wanted to argue, but stayed silent and nodded. Ratchet thought he could see a glimpse of relief in the boy's azure eyes. He wondered what the following conversations would bring with them. R.C. and Wheeljack clearly knew something, and Smokescreen and Prime 2 had some idea. Bulkhead and Bumblebee both looked at the medic with question in their eyes, but Ratchet could only shake his head. He, too, had no idea what truly was going on. They would have to be patient. Bulkhead herded the other humans. Maiko was speaking rapidly in English, telling about everything that had been said, to the other side of the room so Naruto could get some rest. Jack and Raph turned many times to glance back at Naruto. Ratchet sighed. So much had changed, very quickly. But guess that had really been just a matter of time. Mrs. Darby made her way back to them and the occupied hospital bed. She was rather pale and was pursing her lips tightly. I need to check if he has any more injuries, she announced. The look in her eyes clearly said she was not to be contradicted. Ratchet nodded. Please do. He's been through a lot. There was a flash of something unreadable in Mrs. Darby's eyes before the woman nodded and walked to Naruto's bedside once more. She will just check if you have any other injuries, then you can get some sleep, the white medic told Naruto. The boy looked like he would have liked to argue but nodded resignedly, the wariness getting the better of him. Ratchet watched as Jack's mother studied the young male's knuckles with a critical eye. 
the little cuts and nasty bruises had already started to fade, as if they were days, not hours old. Truly remarkable. He had no idea how long he had been hanging there in the darkness. Just hanging around. Hi ha. What a terrible joke. Abito would have been so disappointed in him. He really was tired. He had fallen asleep at some point. Now that he was awake again the weariness was still clinging to his mind, trying to drag it back into the oblivion. He blinked slowly, trying to clear his vision after another spell of unconsciousness. He had no idea about the time. He was still rather tired so the time spent here in the lonely wherever he was could not have been very long. Suddenly there was a loud clanking sound coming from somewhere in the darkness, and a slam that might have been caused by a closing door. He slowly raised his one-eyed gaze and stared into the dark. Sounds of loud footsteps emanated from the edge of the room, slowly coming closer. Soon Kakashi could see a large figure appearing, even darker than the darkness before the Decepticon walked to the halo of the white harsh light. Kakashi found himself staring into red mechanical eyes of the biggest robot he had for now encountered. The being was even taller than Optimus Prime and despite the fact that Kakashi was already suspended far above the floor, the Decepticon still towered above him. He did not like that. At all. So, you have finally woken up, the robot said in Japanese. Hairs in the back of Kakashi's neck stood up when he heard the voice. It was that kind of voice that immediately told that the speaker was someone very accustomed to eliminating everyone standing in their path between them and their goal. It was a voice that left no doubt that the speaker believed to be above everyone and everything else. Kakashi put together one and one and the identity of the Decepticon became very clear. He held the red gaze steadily. Megatron then, I presume? He said smoothly despite his weariness. Megatron chuckled darkly. I see Prime has already told you about me. Wonder what else he has babbled to you about. The eyes flashed. The Autobots do get so easily attached to their human pets. Kakashi narrowed his eye. So you figured out the language part, he said dryly. Megatron scoffed. Just because my subordinate was unable to realize it doesn't mean it was difficult for me. The huge steel gray Decepticon then slowly walked around him, inspecting him like some fascinating insect in a glass jar. Kakashi flexed his fingers fixing the con with a harsh glare when he was again face to face with him. About a week ago, Megatron began, looking down at him, there was an energy spike coming from the desert. Energy not unlike the one of a ground bridge. And when I sent someone there to investigate they found two humans. The red eyes narrowed threateningly. It would be wise to tell me where you came from, you bug, before I decide you are no use for me. Kakashi just stared at him unblinking and without a word. Megatron laughed. Well aren't you a brave little crawler. I should warn you that if you refuse to cooperate, there are means to make you scream every little detail of your origin. The voice had changed from amused into vicious. And then you will tell me what you did to destroy my team of vehicons. What, didn't even one of your henchmen survive to tell the tale? Kakashi mocked. Megatron reached out and closed his huge steely claw-like fingers around the chains from which Kakashi was hanging. The Decepticon then yanked him up from the chains so that they were on eye level. The Jounin let out a pained grunt, grimacing as his arms were forced to strain even more. Let me make something clear to you, you pathetic little being, Megatron snarled, his face very close to the ninjas. You may think you can maintain that attitude and defiance. But I can assure you that it won't be for long. Your Autobot friends won't find you, they cannot get aboard and they definitely won't be able to come and rescue you. We will have a very long time to discuss about you and your abilities. Suddenly there was even more unpleasant glint in the red eyes. And of course, about your companion. Rather interesting topic for a conversation, that little beast. The pain in Kakashi's arms was nothing compared to the agonizing feeling of dread that settled hard and heavy to the pit of his stomach like a piece of a glacier. Megatron must have seen something in his eye because the Decepticon laughed again. Hit a nerve, did I? Kakashi swallowed. No, that could not have happened. If the Cubi had taken over, that meant anything could have happened. 
Naruto could have even attacked the Autobots. Kakashi shuddered and resisted the urge to bow his head. No, he would still look the evil in the eye, even if it could now see how shaken he was. I have never seen anything like that before, I must admit, Megatron continued, still holding him up by the chains that were painfully digging to his arms. The boy could be a great use to me, don't you agree, Bug? You can't control it, Kakashi snarled suddenly, rage threatening to take over his mind, it felt so much better than the despair. No one can, least of all you. Oh, but I disagree. And it's not about direct control, human. It's about using the inability to do so. Megatron dropped the chains suddenly and Kakashi let out a cry of pain when he fell and the chains snapped straight again. It's about deciding where and when that uncontrollable action will happen. The Decepticon towered above him once more, but Kakashi didn't have the strength to look up anymore. He was breathing heavily, I close tightly as he tried to control the pain. And judging by how he went to the rampage after my flyers threatened you I think I have gained useful insight of how to get him to dot lose control. Kakashi forced himself to tilt his head back to look the Khan in the eye. Then dot it'll be your loss. For he will come after you. He managed to ground out. Then his vision was already turning black. He heard one last thing before the darkness claimed him again. Well, we will see about that. Megatron returned to the bridge and went straight to the computers. Soon the screens were once more displaying the video footage of the blonde-haired human child turning into a raging monster. His optics were trained to the beast, to the furious or circling it, cloaking it and apparently giving the human incredible powers. At first he had thought both of the newly arrived humans might have had similar talents, that would have explained how they had managed to destroy the flyers. But according to Soundwave's report that was not the case. The chief of communications had peculiarly described that the feeling when the monster had surfaced had not been experienced earlier in the battle. And it had seemed to be so uncontrollable, like the kid wasn't really doing it, more like he had just succumbed to the rage. The pleasant conversation with the silver-haired one had just strengthened the theory. The older human had been shocked to hear about the beast, it had not been part of the plan. No. The humans did have some other abilities. And he would unravel them, sooner or later. Oh, this new turnout gave him so many possibilities. He could extract all the information possible from their prisoner and when they had all the useful data he would contact Team Prime and then torture and probably kill the insolent man. Based on the boy's reaction showed on the footage, perhaps that would be more than enough to send the boy into another fit of uncontrollable fury in the middle of the Autobot base. Of course, his plan needed more information and some of his assumptions required confirmation before it could be properly executed. He would not fail this golden opportunity. We shall give our guest some rest before questioning him further, the leader of the Decepticons said and the Vehicons nearby snapped into attention. He's weak and shaken. It won't be long after the pathetic being's resolve will be shattered to pieces. Well that's the ending of that chapter, I do hope you enjoy this video if you like to see more remember, to hit that like button subscribe to this channel and leave a comment down below until next time.